Okay, hello YouTube. Today we're going to be going over the Petrovs. After e4, e5, knight of 3, knight of 6, we have the Petrovs. And of course the super main line of the Petrovs is knight takes e5, and that involves a lot of study and a lot of theoretical knowledge. But for people that want to avoid all of that theory study, there is this alternative. There's this move pawn to d4, which is known as the Steinitz variation. And this cuts way down on the amount of preparation that you have to have. So if you like content like this and you want more of it, please hit that subscribe button and click on your notification icon. Now the reason d4 Four cuts down on the amount of your theoretical preparation is because black really only has two replies here. He has e takes d4 and he has knight takes e4, and white's moves and white's plans from there are relatively straightforward and relatively simple because really you only need enough theoretical knowledge to get to a point where you can just kind of play chess and you know where to put your pieces. And the positions after d4, the Steinitz variation, lend that lend themselves to that very nicely. So. One move you have to be prepared for is knight takes e4. Now here there's basically two moves. There's this move bishop to d3, which was actually played very recently between Magnus Carlsen and Ian Nepomuche in the World Championship match in 2021. And Carlsen actually went on to win this game. Uh, Nepomuche continued with d5, Carlsen continued with knight takes e5. We had knight d7, knight d7, bishop d7, and then we had knight d2, knight d2, bishop d2, uh, bishop d6, castles, and h5, queen e1, check. So here, Nepomniček probably should have just played queen e7 and exchanged queens, and the position is still relatively equal. Uh, but instead, for whatever reason, I guess he thought he was playing for a win or something, uh, he played this move king f8, which turned out to be a very bad idea, because it allowed Carlsen to trade off his bad bishop with the move bishop to b4, uh, queen e7, bishop d6, queen d6, and then simply queen d2, rook e8, rook e1, rook h6, queen g5. And as it turns out, it's very, very difficult for black to ever finish coordinating his material. He can't easily bring his rook to e6 because the h5 pawn hangs, and his pieces are overall disconnected. It's also good to note that Carlson is left with his good bishop, and the Pomniche is left with his bad bishop. And this was actually enough for Carlson to go on to win the game. And that's kind of what people try to do in the Steinitz variation. They try to get some very minute, very small advantage, and they try to turn that into something bigger, hopefully a slight edge or a decisive advantage later on and then eventually play for a win from there, which is really the way you have to play against the Petrovs anyway, making the Steinitz variation a very reasonable alternative uh, to go after the Petrovs defense. So this was the World Championship match uh, very recently in Dubai in 2021, and Carlsen went on to win. So another option is after... Uh, knight takes e4, you can play this other move. You can play this move d takes e5. Now this move was actually my preference, especially when I was in uh, high school, especially when I was a scholastic player, uh, just because it requires even less theoretical knowledge and you get, um, you really get uh, a very slight edge with white without a whole lot of work. And you also get an asymmetrical position, which is usually easier to win from than a position that has symmetrical pawns. So there's this game very recently, this game between Ferruja and Najir played in Riga in 2021 that continued d5, knight on b to d2. This is kind of the idea. Knight d2, bishop d2, bishop e7, c3, c5, bishop d3. And as you can see, the placement of white's pieces kind of going forward is going to be supernatural, or at least for me, it's supernatural. Natural. You're just kind of going to castle, you're going to play rook e1, uh, maybe queen e2 or bishop c2, you know, bring your other rook to d1, h3 to break a pin if they play bishop g4. It's all just very natural uh, looking moves. So the game continued, knight c6, castles, bishop g4, rook e1, still very natural, queen d7, h3 to put the question to the bishop, bishop h5, bishop h4 just safeguarding the pawn. Uh, Queen to e6, uh, bishop to e2 to break that pin once and for all, castles, queen d2, bishop g6, rook a d1, and as you can see, all of white's pieces are really coordinated, white has a very clear slight advantage, then he's just going to continue to just try to play chess and play for a win from here, and he actually ended up winning the game. This was Ferruja versus uh, Najir, played in Riga in 2021. So, going back, uh, what are the other moves that people can play against d4. Well, there's not a whole lot. Other than knight takes e5, the only other real move that they can try is this move e takes d4, in which case you're going to respond with this move pawn to e5. Now, they're almost invariably going to play knight to e4, and then you can play queen d4. Now, perhaps on, on like kind of a side note, this is maybe the most reliable way for black to get to a symmetrical pawn structure. Because after d5, white doesn't really have a whole lot better than e takes d6 on passant, and then knight takes d6. 
And in this position, White should have a very, very slight edge just because he has a little bit more development and he has a little bit more space. But it's an interesting question as to how exactly you're going to convert this slight advantage into some sort of win. But on the other hand, it's also a very easy position for White to play. It's very clear where the rest of White's pieces are going to go. He's going to play bishop d3, knight c3, castles. If his queen gets attacked, he's going to move it. It's also very clear that White does have a slight edge because he is up that extra tempo. So the main move here is kind of this move bishop d3. It's interesting to note that the move knight c3 was actually tried uh, between Kasparov and Karpov um, in the World Championship match back in 1990, but Karpov was able to get the draw pretty easily. It went knight c6, queen f4, knight f5, bishop b5, bishop d6, queen e4 check, queen e7, bishop g5, f6, bishop back to d2, and eventually the queens got exchanged, and even though Kasparov tried to make some stuff happen, uh, nothing's there, and it just ends in a draw. Um, you know, that was Kasparov Karpov, played in uh, New York back in 1990. So, really, uh, it's an interesting question as to why Kasparov played knight c3. I mean, bishop d3 was not unknown to theory back then, but he might have just been trying something newer to get Karpov out of his book. But uh, that game ended in a draw. But the main line is certainly bishop d3, and then knight c6, and then queen f4, g6, castles, bishop g7, rookie one check, bishop e6, knight c3. This was all played in uh, Rodriguez versus uh, Sipasas, uh in uh, Barber and Barber, and I'm terrible at pronouncing things uh, back in 1997. Uh, and that game continued castles uh, and Bishop E3, which was followed a bunch of different times. Now, all these games, they seemed to end in a draw, but what's interesting is there's a ton of alternatives even starting here. Uh, this move pawn to h4 is a very interesting alternative, which is also supposed to be slight edge white. And even after the move bishop e3, this is all still supposed to be slight edge white. Um, there's this game bishop e3, queen f6, queen a4, uh, h6, uh, rook ad1. And of course, the uh, Rodriguez versus Sapatos game continued knight e4, knight e4, bishop e4. Bishop d7, rook a d1, rook a d8, c3, a6, queen c2, and none of this is bad. Rook f e8, h3, bishop c8, rook d8, and they agreed to a draw here, even though white still has a very, very slight pool. So even from here, you could continue trying to play for a win. They just agreed to shake hands and go home, um, which is one of the things that you see in a bunch of these different games. Uh, the move rook a to d1 uh, was played in Vashir Lagrave versus Crescent Cow. Um, the computer doesn't like it as much as the move knight to e4, but Vashir Lagrave actually won that game against Crescent Cow. So, you know, go figure. He was able to continue to play for a win, and he actually uh, went on to get the win in uh, Vashir Lagrave versus Crescent Cow, played in Warsaw in 2021. So that's certainly another way to go. Um, so... Going back to just the Steinitz variation, very little theory that you actually have to memorize. Uh, if knight takes e4, you can play d takes e4, and uh, after uh, d5, you can play knight d2, and all the moves are very natural from here. And against the other move, against takes, you're going to play e5 here, queen here, d5, takes, takes, bishop d3, and really all the moves are very natural from here. So it's a really quick shortcut to just get good positions from which you can play chess without having to know a ton of opening theory. And uh, that is how you play the Steinitz variation of the uh, Petrovs as white. And it's a nice way to meet the Petrovs without having to learn reams and reams and reams of theory or have to memorize, you know, tons and tons and tons of games, uh, you know, two or three STEM games and you're good to go. So anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess and I hope you can use some of these ideas in your own games. Thank you very much for watching.